Wanderers Remnant 2 second DLC, The Forgotten Kingdom is just a few days away and ahead of launch, we got a fresh look at the newest archetype coming to the game, the Invoker. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and let's dive back in to Remnant 2. Before we talk about the new archetype, we have to start by exploring some of the new footage and how it relates to the upcoming Forgotten Kingdom DLC. In one of the first shots, we get an incredible close-up look at a new armor set. I suspect this is armor directly connected to Lydusa, and while we saw it in the DLC reveal trailer, this is a much more detailed look at the set, which combines elements of both wood and stone to create this really unique set of gear. I'm especially drawn to the sunken eyes of the helm, which is incredibly off-putting. As you no doubt remember about the game, gear doesn't have any inherent bonuses on the pieces, but each piece does have an armor and weight value and provides various buffs to resistances. Knowing that one of the themes of this DLC is stone, I'm actually going to guess that this is a heavy set of armor. Historically, when you think of heavy gear, we think massive plates and overly bulky, but I don't think that's necessarily always the case. After a quick zoom out, we get a pretty incredible glimpse at a new melee weapon. Again, we saw this in the reveal trailer, but this time around, we see the player activate the weapon's special effect, infusing it with lightning, and then summoning ranged lightning orbs to seek out the nearest enemies. Much like the Krell Axe, this looks to be another melee weapon that offers a ranged option through its special ability. There's even an AoE eruption at the end of the melee sequence. There's simply a lot going on here with this one weapon, and I'm really excited to get my hands on it. Throughout the trailer, we also got a look at a number of enemies in action, not just cinematics, but actual gameplay. In one of the early shots, we see those walking pot enemies fire off a small flame mortar. In a later shot, we also see them lash out with a melee attack, so as is gunfire's way, we're going to have to deal with multiple movesets from these new enemies. We also get a look at those reanimated living stone enemies that float above the ground. These are pretty clearly lesser enemies, but do look to put some pressure on the team as they assault the player with melee attacks. These enemies also look like they can appear out of nowhere attacking unsuspecting players, which I'm not exactly excited about. It doesn't always look to be the case, but I think there are a few jump scares in our near future. Another new enemy revealed in the trailer, this large root enemy looks incredibly familiar, albeit with a giant flower for a head. We only see the enemy in action for a brief second, slamming its head into the ground, but I suspect it'll give us quite a bit of trouble when we eventually come face to face. We also got a look at the flying enemy that was so present in the DLC reveal trailer. Nothing really to call out here as we don't ever see it attack in a clear way, but we do see it floating above the player, flitting to different positions in what is clearly an evasion maneuver, something we'll have to contend with. One of the more surprising gameplay clips we actually saw was that of a new boss, the Stone Warden. We saw a cinematic shot of this enemy in the DLC reveal trailer, but we didn't have a name to associate with its stony face. Based on this quick gameplay clip, we see that the boss wields a massive stone melee weapon that it handles with one hand. I have to imagine this is only one phase or element of the encounter, just knowing Remnant 2's history for awesome boss fights, but we will just have to wait and see. Now let's get to the good stuff here because a new archetype means an entirely new way to play Remnant 2, because of the dual archetype system, it means not just one change, but a ton. First off, we can see that the Invoker's archetype item is called the Spirit Flute. This is important to note as each archetype needs to be unlocked. We know that the Pan have a knack for playing musical instruments, and we've already seen Pan in the DLC reveal trailer, so as we're exploring the Forgotten Kingdom, we'll need to try and connect all of those dots to figure out how to unlock the Invoker archetype. Of course, Legacy Gaming will also have a video to help you out if you're lost. In terms of the archetype's prime perk, well, that's called Visionary, and it doubles all base skill charges when slotted as the prime archetype. More skills means more damage and or healing, but that's not all. The prime perk also reduces skill cooldowns by 10% every time a skill is activated. There are a number of archetypes I could see pairing well with the Invoker, such as the Ritualist, Skills like Eruption already have multiple charges, and the short cooldown means it's going to see even more benefits from the Invoker's prime perk. In terms of skills, the Invoker has three, just like the other archetypes. The first, Way of Keula, which when activated, summons a tidal wave that shoots out in a straight line. Enemies hit are slowed and take periodic damage from lightning bolts that strike them from above. Any allies that are hit receive a haste buff. 
The second skill, Way of Merdra, cleanses an area under the player's feet that expands outward into a decent AoE. Enemies caught in the area receive the Gloom debuff, increasing the elemental damage that they take from all sources. Allies in the cleansed area receive a small burst heal, a constant heal over time, and gain lifesteal against all affected enemies in the AoE. The third and final skill is Way of Lydusa. Every ranged and melee attack on enemies inflict Brittle, which increases critical chance and critical damage. Each attack also chips off a piece of the enemy, and once empowered, you can trigger a large AoE that deals damage to all enemies caught in the blast. The Invoker is all about skills, and we see that in its trait, Gifted, which increases skill duration by 30%, perfectly harmonized with its three core skills that all benefit from the effect. Remember that after you level up the Invoker to 10, the Gifted trait will become accessible no matter what archetype you're using. Thanks to Tragic, Remnant 2's principal game designer, we also know what the Invoker's perks are. The damage perk, Entranced, increases skill damage by 30%, elemental damage by 15%, and skill and elemental critical chance by 5%. These percentages are scaled based on the Invoker's level. The team perk, Communion, reduces skill cooldowns by 1% and heals 2% max health once every 3 seconds for allies while an Invoker skill is active. The utility perk, Mind and Body, increases movement speed by 5% and damage reduction by 5% while an Invoker skill is active. And finally, the Relic perk, Soothsayer, extends the duration of active Invoker skills by 20% of the base duration when a Relic is used. This cannot exceed the base duration, and Relic use speed is also increased by 25% while an Invoker skill is active. I have not gone hands-on with a new archetype yet. I'm experiencing it with you all for the first time here, but based on all of this information, it's pretty clear this is going to be an incredibly powerful new archetype, mainly because I can see it synergizing so well as a dual archetype. By leaning into the focus on skill damage, duration, and cooldown, you can make some really potent builds, and I have a feeling the Invoker is going to unlock a ton of new options for players, especially those that prefer to lean into the archetype skills as their main source of damage, not necessarily the weapons themselves. Of course, those are always going to be important, that's just what it is, but if you're looking to push your Remnant 2 experience further towards an RPG where skills are at the center of a build, I think the Invoker is going to let you accomplish that. Friends, we are just days away from Remnant 2's second DLC, The Forgotten Kingdom. I, for one, cannot wait to dive back into Geisha, and with the confirmation of a one-shot mode once again, it'll be just as easy to experience the new content right from the jump when the DLC goes live on April 23rd. You better believe myself, Livid, and the entire Legacy Gaming team will be releasing videos starting on day one of the DLC's launch, so if you're new to the channel, we'd appreciate you tossing a like our way and consider subscribing. We have been playing and following Remnant 2 since day one and will continue to bring you reviews, guides, and more of what you've come to expect from the channel. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.